last year, we launched the first Ingram's Skin Sessions campaign, driving brave conversations from colorism, gendered beauty norms to self-confidence, getting to the heart of the matter. And we were joined by some powerhouses like Lebo Mashile, uh, Zuleika Patel, the Seasway, our very own Raul Mornay, in fact, helped us to initiate very real conversations about topics that often go undiscussed in broader society. Now, in 2021, we are excited to delve a little deeper beyond the topics that were once just skin deep with the new Ingram's Skin Sessions. What will hopefully be a thought-provoking campaign to start a dialogue surrounding the often controversial issues lying just below the surface. And our first topic, I love this one, beauty redefined. And we are going deep for this one because for decades, media has portrayed the beauty ideal in magazines, online and on TV, the socially constructed notion that physical attractiveness is one of a woman's most important assets. This has had a profound impact on how we perceive ourselves. However, Social media has opened us up to a wider variety of representation, providing us with a new definition of beauty, making room for women of colour, larger women, women with vertiligo, bald women, women with grey and wrinkles. And this newfound celebration of self-love and self-acceptance has even caught on with men. Joining us this morning, we welcome two women, Body Positive Yummy Hearts and Curves Director Oyama Buota, as well as Body Positive Philanthropist and Visual Storyteller Boitumelo Rametsi. Good morning, Queen. Queen, so good to have you with us this morning. Thank good you so much. Good morning. Oh, Yama, I'm going to start with you. Growing up when, where you were bullied due to your weight, what impact did this have on you? How did it influence your perceptions of beauty and perception of yourself? Well, I think growing up for any child, when you're being bullied, there's never anything positive that comes from that because it becomes more a mental thing in the long run. Because, I mean, if it's a case of somebody bullying you about your skewed teeth and then you fix them, and then you realize that it's more than the physical. It's definitely yeah. like internally. I grew up with the cousin who was smaller than me. I didn't see anything wrong with wearing shorts, but people will always project their own insecurities and because they'll be like, no, you're not supposed to wear shorts until you're certain size a certain size being the way that my cousin is because she was way smaller than I was and I later didn't even realize that the way that, that I was navigating my life in terms of the things that I was wearing I realized it had been because of this normative yardstick that's been placed on me from back in the day when I was still a teenager and that I was still internalizing it in my bigger age so it's really been a negative one per se, but I'm glad to have gotten on this journey where I have curated my own narrative on what beauty is. And look at you now, inspiring other people out there to live confidently and comfortably in their skin. And Boitumela, I'll ask you as well, because I remember you described your first experience with vertiligo as unhappy and a traumatic period. I mean, what effect did it have on your self-confidence? And what was your turning point where you were saying like, yes, I'm just gonna own this? So when I was 12, I had my first spots on my baby. And it just started appearing in very little spots um, in primary school and high school as well. And it wasn't such a prominent thing until it started revealing itself after high school. And it's like the one thing that I've always felt was one of my best assets. And I couldn't believe that the one thing that got me through this tough time of beauty being not being defined as what I looked like is now being taken away from me. And that experience was so scary and it really brought me to a sense of believing that I would never want to be a mother. Wow. Because I can't handle something like this. How can anyone else deal with something like this? And it was scary. I did my research and it was like from 21, it starts spreading. Or if it doesn't, it'll start at the age of 40. So either way, my life is just going to blow out of my mind. And by God's grace, I happened to fall pregnant. I got to have a child and my son doesn't have the Tadigo. But that experience in itself was also scary because he's new to this world. More people commonly look like it's either you're black or you're white or you're Indian. And here I am with two different skin tones. What am I supposed to say? Mm. And again, by God's grace and nature and how I am with myself, I didn't have to explain much. He loves me unconditionally. In fact, he even said moments where he wanted to look like me. But I also went through scary phases with me taking him to school. And he's obviously a little nervous thinking, I think maybe you should stay in the car. And 
that in a moment in itself is for me to deal with it as in feeling like is my child ashamed of me how do i deal with it how do i help him learn about it how do i help him educate other people about it where he doesn't feel ashamed that someone is asking about my skin condition yeah it's amazing with a with a child it gets real very quickly and it's amazing how much of your own baggage you've got to set aside so yama i've got an important one with you for you here um you know obviously for your curves your gorgeous curves what comes with the territory especially on social media are critics and some are saying that you're encouraging people to live unhealthy lifestyles how do you respond to that Imagine that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine that. I think it's absolutely absurd to me that um, any other person who's of smaller size compared to me can live a fulfilling life that looks normal. But the moment that I do the exact same thing, then it's you advocating for unhealthy ways of life. It's absolutely absurd because. Even if we exercise the same way and we ate the same food, we'd still have different bodies. Mm. So that narrative for me, I feel like it should literally be laid to rest. That's my immediate response to critics like that. But I love that. what comes with the territory in terms of what I do on social media, I call it really just being myself and living my life. That's what it is. Is that mm. obviously there's for me personally there's more good than bad because I've curated and created my space to be a reflection of who. I am now and who I want to be. If anything disturbs that piece of where you want to be and how you want to feel in your body and the projections of what you see beauty being as, then mute and block. And I choose to dwell in the positive light of what I see is my journey and my my beauty going forward. Yeah, don't don't project on me. Don't you, you project say, on me. Said. Keep your projections yourself. Yeah. It's honestly the un <laughs> it's the unfollow for me though. But maybe a question for both of you as we wrap things up. It's interesting to see how both of you have completely redefined beauty for yourselves and mm. yet both have in a way had a similar impact. What exactly does the term beauty redefined mean to both of you? So beauty redefined is allowing yourself to evolve being happy with the person that you are at the present moment mm -hmm. not what you look like 10 years ago being able to stand in front of the mirror celebrating your body and loving your body within the present moment i definitely agree with what you mean in terms of uh being happy and have some body confidence in yourself and but more than anything for me it's really taking autonomy of what it means to you because when they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder you need to be your own beholder so that's why for me starting that all the all bodies of beautiful meetup even for yummy hearts and curves to be where it is now it's really been about me redefining my beauty and being spaces and collaborating with brands like ingrams who are enforcing the type of narrative when it comes to beauty Yes. I love it. You are both wonderful, amazing human beings. Thank you so much for engaging with us so candidly this morning. I think a lot of people would have taken a huge amount out of this discussion. I wish we could sit and chat for the next two hours, but I'm going to wish both of you a beautiful, wonderful mm -hmm. day. And thank you again for joining us this morning. You are superstars. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having us. That was so amazing. Oh, man, and we will continue that conversation. Everyone is fighting a battle we know nothing about. So let's be kind and celebrate one another. And to quote an article published in National Geographic, we are moving toward a culture of big tent beauty, one in which everyone is welcome. Everyone is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Now listen up because you stand a chance to win one of 10 1,000 Rand vouchers over the next 10 weeks. All you have to do is reply to the competition post on the Expresso Facebook, Twitter or Instagram page and tell us what changed your perceptions of beauty. And don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag your skin, your brave. Now this week's competition closes Friday the 18th of June at midday and those T's and C's can be found on our website, expressoshow.com. Nourish your skin with Ingram's Moisture Plus, enriched with triple glycerine. For 48 hour intensive moisture. Ingram's Your Skin, Your Brave.